Hello everyone, this is Supernova Jink UFO. I hope I'm recording. Anyway, I just a quick word, word before we start this uh, this scratch tutorial. I unfortunately have to use my old recording software to do this because my new recording software only only records games. I learned that the hard way. Um, but so you know the same old problems that I did have once uh, with the stopping. Uh, will happen, but it won't be uh, poorly edited like my last tutorial. Um, so, you know, look forward to that. But there will be some jolts like that, unfortunately. Um, but I hopefully, hopefully, this is the last video where I have to do that, because uh, I not only will be using my new recording software for any games videos that I'll be making, but I'll also be updating this software so I can record uh, unlimitedly uh, so that's something to look forward to so welcome to my third scratch tutorial um, so I got some feedback for the first one first of all and uh, people didn't like oh well, people liked the um, the the walkthrough of creating a scratch project but they say I should do some other things so that's what I'm going to do. So this tutorial is going to cover basically clones. So clones have to be the worst part of Scratch 2.0. They're new. They weren't in the old Scratch, uh, and they're extremely glitchy. They're um, they're non-intuitive. They're problematic. Uh, so they're just a mess. Uh, which it's not. That's that kind of sucks because clones are a very useful tool. Uh, they allow you to add sort of a randomness, something that the project can decide rather than you. Instead of having to create like a ton of sprites, you can just have one sprite clone itself. So you can have basically an unlimited, well, 300, 300 amounts of sprites uh, at a time without having to create them and provide scripts for all of them. So yeah, so basically I want to teach you all how to use the, the clones correctly and how to avoid some of the problems that they get. So the biggest problem that I've had with clones is uh, basically if I have more than one, so I'll just create another one. Whoops, move over there. If I just create another one, if I have more than one clone, both of them will respond to a hap block. Alright, so a hap block is basically a boolean reporter um, inside of a an if function uh, in a forever block that goes beyond the uh, the project being running. It it'll happen all the time. It'll always it'll always be open. So uh, the thing is it's actually very intuitive to think that the hat blocks is only affecting the original sprite but the thing is they also affect a clone so the first thing we'll start off as uh, with the, uh, the green flag now the green flag is the only hat block which does not affect clones and the reason being when the green flag uh, function happens it also performs a where is it a stop all function which is also performed by this and uh, that function, part of that function is to delete clones so there will be no clones when this function happens so there's there's no problems with it so as you can see that clones deleted and uh, my my what my script says to make a clone when I start as clone it will be moving to the center position. But uh, the next thing is when this sprite is clicked, now this affects the only thing that's that is clicked. So if I clicked the uh, the sprite it wouldn't affect the clones if, and if I click the clone it wouldn't affect the sprite or any of the other clones. But it's important to know that that also affects the clones so if you're planning on the person clicking on the clone it's gonna have that same effect. Um, but the most annoying are when a certain key is pressed 
and uh, when you receive a message, now if I press space, all of those will be cloned. Not not this guy, all of them. And that can be problematic because uh, the message system, it's it's complicated. You want a fluid. Now I'm not explaining that right. Anyway, it can be problematic. I've had a a situation where I wanted the certain sprite to make a clone of itself when it received a message, but of course all the clones made a clone of themselves, and that was seriously problematic. So don't don't do that. And also, I just did the key press thing. A message thing also does that. If you think about it, so that's what I did. And the thing is, it's exponential. Also, I have a, I have my uh, message key sent to when the key of A is pressed, but a message is virtually like a uh, an artificial input. It's created in, within the project. If a if an artificially created condition is met within the project, then it sends a message. Uh, it's it's useful. Um, just it has that problem. So, the, but there is a workaround. So uh, the first thing is. The uh, when the key is pressed, there's another. It's th this is basically a boolean, and it actually has a boolean version of it in the sensing, which this is far superior to this, uh, because not only is does it only apply to when certain conditions are met, um, but it also it's smoother. There's like a weight when this happens it's it's kinda weird so we'll have a uh, forever in here and an if this is, this is the only drawback this is uh, the hat block is basically all these combined now you have a visual so this is basically the same thing except it requires a hat block but that's a good thing and we'll just move that in there and uh, so now you can see. Oh, I should probably. Oh dear, uh, that's the only other thing. It uh, this also waits for that to happen. So, or for it, for it to to finish happening. So we should. We'll just do that. Or whoops. Add a not variable on it, or a not operator and uh, it's smooth it's just one clone and as you can see this clone didn't make another clone it's just coming from the original sprite which is a good thing if you want that of course if you want the clones to make something then uh, in fact what I would do is I just actually don't want that happening I would do this. I really would. As you can see, that also does the same function uh, and it's more reliable. So, anyway. Now, uh, of course, that's only for this. Is there a, uh, a boolean for a message received? No, it's not in here that's unfortunate but there is a workaround for it so I described we'll, we'll think about we'll take the hat block down per se so uh, the message hat block is basically a, bo a boolean reporter um, and a boolean reporter is basically just something that reports true or false not a numeric as opposed to a numerical value such as uh, this numerical reporter which basically reports any kind of information. Uh, so th this is now um, I, I, ex I explained what this was. So it reports true and false, and uh, so the thing is, we can actually create our own boolean out of a numerical reporter. So which is a, va a variable. So we'll call this create clone. 
and we'll make that for the people. Uh, it was my recording software again. Well, I was saying uh, this doesn't have to be for all sprites, but you know, in fact, I'm, I'm not going to make it for all sprites just because create clone okay so this or uh, alright so for a variable you can actually set it to true or false or you can set it to one or zero um, you can set that just like a message so when you it's basically the same thing as this the way we're using it so when we broadcast this it automatically sets the uh, if there was a boolean for uh, received a message it would set that to true so if we set this to one that will be the same thing it would be setting this to true so this goes with this as this goes with this right here and so we can actually make it within the uh, green flag block because remember this only applies to the original object get rid of that what the oh pfft. hate my habits get rid of that too so if create clone equals one um, we'll create a clone of myself and then it's also very important to set create clone to zero instead of wait until not space key press because nothing's gonna ch change it to zero you know it's, it's not like I can just press something make create clone set to one or I probably can but Anyway, it, it that doesn't always apply. So, uh, so now, so now we have that, and we can either have it so that the message sets that to one. Uh, also, set a default. That's important. Or we can actually have it. There was a reason to make it for all sprites. Okay, so if you're gonna if you're gonna have it for more than one sprite, then it should be for all sprites. I'm sorry about that. I'm only human. I'm not a robot yet. Anyway, so we'll, we'll leave it as that. And uh, just like with the space thing, pressing A and sending the message only what the f Okay. N never mind. It only creates a clone from the original. And that's what we want. And of course, we can always make it like this. If you want the clones to make a clone of one another. What the Okay, I think I just made a, a crack box of clones here. Anyway. <laughs> so, y you guys understand what I'm saying. So that's the workaround. Oh dear. I think I, I, think I know why that happens. Okay. I'm just a little bit intrigued by this. We should probably have it to wait until the key of A is not pressed because that wouldn't even work though, would it? Because this, the hat block still overrides it. Oh well. You see, that's why you don't really want to use this block is haplock right there. It's not very useful at all. 
Anyway, so a couple of notable things about clones other than that is, um, first of all, they act both like they're part of the same sprite and they're part of different sprites, which is kind of weird. You know, I think the Scratch team was a little bit, had some problems with that. I don't like how to decide, but basically, so if we had a make a block, call it, uh, the make a block would apply as if it were part of the same sprite, but unfortunately, a uh, a personal var variable would not apply. Now it can be dragged into. Okay. Okay. I guess the personal variable does apply. Um, but that means it's it's universal. Anyway, so you can't have a clone can't have its own personal variable as opposed to say another sprite. So what what scratchers used to do was they would make copies of a sprite like this. And then they would have their own personal little version, personal versions of uh, their own, of what was once a the original sprite's personal variable. But uh, that doesn't work with clones anymore because they uh, they all function as according to one variable. Oh, never mind. Sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyway. That doesn't work. J just say, just personal variables do not work with clones, okay? That's all I'm saying. Um, so if you want to actually use the variables with uh, the different clones, then you'd have to make some separate ones with different names. So create clone2 before all sprites. And it would be, it would be different. Or if we were uh, going to have like a clone with a different like appearance, then it would be like, say if this was red for one of the clones, it would be create clone red, and the original one would be create clone orange. Yes, something like that. But um, it's that that's what you'd need to do if you're going to have a personal variable. Or you can also make a list which does the same thing except list can be kinda tricky because uh, it can be kinda hard to make the clone access its certain item which is its own but uh, there is a way to do it with the make a block in fact a, a while ago I said uh, I don't really know any use for make a block but I did find out quite a few of them in my time uh, so I will show that in another tutorial um, but there is a make a block used for clones uh, to identifying their number on a list, which I will explain in detail sometime later. And uh, that's basically clones. And by the way, just a fair warning, when there's a lot of them in some cases, the clones will generate, but they won't appear. They'll, they'll be like hidden, uh, but they'll still have the effect. Like if I generate a clone from this guy, and had another guy here, and the clone was supposed to go over here and touch this guy. So the clone wouldn't appear, but it would still touch this guy, and if the touching this guy had any effect, that would still happen. And it's kind of weird, and it's, you know, it's a glitch. I tried to report it, but uh, one of the moderators is like, no, you're probably just running into the, um, the 300 limit. I've, that's how I found out about the 300 limit. Not to be any, di not to be disrespectful to you, the guy who I do not want to mention, that told me about that. Um, but yeah, it's my impression. It's my impression, boys. Okay, so I hope this helped you guys a little bit, and I will see you guys later.